Well, they've been coming here since 1878, but it's doubtful that the great race has seen a build-up as controversial as this one. Hello everyone, I'm Peter Donegan. Welcome to Central Park in Stall for the 127th running of the Australia Post Stall Gift. And yes, the headlines may have been for the wrong reasons in the build-up, but as I welcome the 1982 champion, Chris Perry. Chris, one thing stays the same, and that is that one man is going to write his name into folklore this afternoon. I'm really looking forward to this afternoon, Peter. There should be some cracking running going on today. Now, perhaps one man can land the knockout blow, Ben Vickery, the former boxer who had a knee reconstruction three years ago. He changed from boxing to athletics. I think he made the right choice because as we look at his semi-final on Saturday, he was very impressive. Well, he ran the fastest time on Saturday. He ran 12.28. He's trained by Peter Van Miltenberg, one of my old sparring partners from amateur days, and he is in with a big chance this afternoon. Now, look, as I said, you won in 1982, so a few things might have changed since then, but for the most part, things stay the same here at Central Park, especially the fact that the man who wins the gift will have a life-changing experience. Half a century ago, the world was a very different place, but the spirit of Stall was the same as it's ever been. History weaving another special thread into the rich tapestry of Australia's most famous foot race, with a young man from the Melbourne suburb of Ascot Vale writing his name into the record books. 50 years ago today, Malcolm Durant's victory off eight and a half metres changed his life forever. I think once you've won a Stall gift, it lives with you all your life. Um, if you go for a job interview, it automatically comes out and then they stop talking to you about the job and you're sort of a celebrity all of a sudden. Um, it's, it sort of stays with you. Um, if you want to be something in sport, as Dennis DeVellis said after he ran second, his father said, to get in the Miller's Guide, you either got to win a Melbourne Cup or a stall gift. He said, I only had two legs, so it was obvious what I did. You've kept a lot of your, your memorabilia. Take us through some of the checks that, that you've got here and, and what they yeah. mean. Well, this one here is uh, for the 750 pounds, which is first uh, for stall in 1958. A little different today, I think it's 40,000. But um, take the time difference in, it's probably worth about the same. This is a Hope Sweeney special. Hope used to uh, have a shop in Little Burke Street. And these uh, shoes were made uh, to fit my feet exactly. These are made out of wallaby hide. They're probably a little heavier than what the uh, modern shoe is today, but uh, I'd stick with these. In 1958, his then girlfriend, Lorraine, was one of the first to congratulate her childhood sweetheart. Two years later, they were married. And like the gift itself, their relationship has stood the test of time, including a blossoming family of three generations. Uh, she had to give up a lot because running is a very personal uh, thing that takes a lot of your time and uh, she was pretty patient with me for something like 13 years out training six months of the year. She's been pretty good in that regard, very supportive. And just finally, is it one of the greatest things you've ever done in your life? Uh, apart from marrying my wife, yeah. <laughs> Sure, it seems like only yesterday for Malcolm Durant. Great to have him here at Stall today to see a great program. And of course, it's featured first by the semi finals of the Australia Post Stall Gift. But races of all distances 400 metres, 1600 metres. A little later in the day, the elite athletes with a disability will be going around. We'll have the back markers all leading up to the 127th Australia Post Stall Gift, the culmination of our day. Well, part of the day here at Central Park is about betting as well as about athletics. And to find out what the punters have been making of it so far. It's good afternoon and welcome to our telecast, Ian Cohen. Yes, good afternoon, Peter. Good afternoon, everyone. A great day here at Central Park. Let's have a look at what's on Marantelli's board. And in the first semi, it's all about the man that was the pre-race favourite, Richard Henkin, $1.33. In the second, it's a race in two in TMR and also Jamison, $1.70 and $1.80. In the third, Otis Gower, the 100 metre national champion at $1.66. In the fourth, it's split between Davies and Vickery, the man you spoke about, the boxer, turned back to pro runner Ben Vickery. In the fifth, she at $2.60, and at the other end, we've also got a Dwyer at $2.60. And in the last, it's all about the front runners, Peters, and also King at $2. So a big day ahead of us. Stick with us on the 10 Network. After this break, we'll find out who can write their name into the history books for the 2008 Australia Post Stall Gift.
just when Libby decides to give Dan another chance. She never expected his wife to show up. When Simone Buchanan comes to Ramsey Street, are things about to heat up? Then, there's a new hottie in town, and he's definitely here to stay. This week on Neighbours, watch him rock his way into everyone's hearts. Dean Geyer joins the cast of Neighbours this week. We're faster, we get more skill, we get the stamina. You know, when it comes to the physicality of the sport, the African Americans have the advantage. It just comes natural to us. I mean, you gotta look back at our ancestry, because we were born warriors. It's natural instinct. It's like a killer mentality. If you look at the way a black male is built, we're more muscular, stronger. You wanna be like us? <laughs> What if you could lose weight without losing your lifestyle? What if you could eat out and still lose weight? What if you could eat all your favourite foods? What if you could get advice on how to keep the weight off from people who've done it and access online tools 24-7? What if you could join Weight Watchers for $15 and save over $35? What if you called Weight Watchers now on 13 19 97? At Flight Centre, we go out of our way to find you the perfect holiday at a great price. London Airfare from $1,729. Bangkok Airfare from $875. Or this New Zealand package with airfare and seven days car hire from $599. Fiji Family Seven Night Package with airfare, breakfast daily and transfers from $1,319. Plus, right now get an exclusive 20% off Intrepid Tours through Asia. Call now, 131 600. Become part of the dance experience. Visit 10.com.au slash dance for your chance to win a Holden Astra CDX three-door coupe valued at over $31,000. This is your chance to take centre stage. Entries close soon. Don't miss out. The Big Splash Festival at Melbourne Aquarium with Dorothy the Dinosaur, Henry the Octopus and Captain Feathersword in free live shows, plus amazing shark feeds and more. The Big Splash Festival at Melbourne Aquarium, the school holidays. The sleeping giant has woken, but don't be afraid. While he's been asleep, he's been dreaming up giant savings for all your betting needs. When you purchase a Sleepy Head queen size mattress, you'll receive the base for free, plus two Sleepy Head latex pillows, all for free. That's a saving of $650. This fabulous offer also applies when you purchase any Sleepy Head double or king size mattress and base. You get the base and two Sleepy Head latex pillows for free. The sleeping giant is offering four years interest free on a minimum purchase of $750. Come into one of the sleeping giant stores for giant deals. The sleeping giant, the right bed for everybody. Monday. Mondays are hard work. Mondays can be uphill. You start a diet on a Monday. You get Monday-itis on Monday. Lots of songs have been written about Mondays. And on Mondays, more people play on holidays. At Australia Post, we organise passports, traveller's checks and foreign currency. You can do your personal banking and pay bills before you go. So you'll enjoy more of every day. Australia Post, part of every day. Well, the build-up is now behind us. It's time to get down to business in 2008 at Central Park. The first semi-final of the Australia Post Store Gift about to get underway. Seven men running for the first of the places in the final coming up later on this afternoon. And they're about to get down on their blocks. Let's take a look at the start list. Aaron Roos Serret of Baronia, the 20-year-old, is in red from 2.5 metres. Ian McFarlane White comes from 3.75, John Adams in blue 4.25, Scott Mace in yellow 5.75, the Maryborough gift winner last year, Ben Southwell in green 7 metres, Richard Hankin the 26 year old sales manager in pink from 7 metres and Peter Walsh the 31 year old from Carayo is the outmarker, the PE teacher coming from 9 metres here. And uh, a few interesting runners here, Chris Perry, Aaron Rouge Serrett is one of them. We'll get the instructions from the starter in just a moment. This man with a PB of 10.36 over 100 metres, 2008 Victorian 100 metre champion, Runners, World Junior Championship semi-finalist. I give you the command and when I call you to the set, I'm going to hold you till everyone is firmly settled. Now runners, I'm going to be severe on any movement in the set position. If you're unsteady, put up your hand. We saw Richard Hankin, perhaps the gift favourite, he's going to be hard to beat. Off seven metres, he's going to be in the... Uh, 
in the out mark. He's got to run down Peter Walsh. Peter Walsh's been away for a couple of um, months, but he's come back absolutely firing. Up, and he's going to give him a, a big run for his money. Ian McFarlane, the man there in white, third in the gift final last year, has already won this year, won at Kilo. Scott Mace, the man in yellow, was runner-up to him at Keeler. So there's plenty in this. Scott Mace, just 17 years of age, showing experience beyond his years, making his competitors wait. Ruth Serrett a little unsteady. Sir! Away now, Hankin start okay, Walsh got a good start, Hankin's coming after him now, Ruth Serrett starting to weed up the ground and the Green Southwell is going well too, but Hankin's got them covered, he's going to win, it's a matter of the time now, Hankin comes away, beats McFarlane and Ruth Serrett, 12-10, well that's impressive, he had a lot there and he has dominated that race really after about the first 20 metres or so. Well, that was a lot better run than he put up on Saturday, Peter. He really went to the line well. What a terrific effort. We're looking in the pink. He's two from the outside. His opposition's going to come from the red and the white. But at the 50-metre mark, he puts the afterburners on and races away from the field. Very strong. Fist in the air. He's got that one at 12.10. That is a good opening uh, semi-final, Peter. Very, very strong. Command of the race from the halfway point. His start wasn't brilliant, but the way he finished off was, as we look at Richard Hankin in isolation, let's hear what he's got to say after the first of the semi-finals with Ian Cohen. Thanks very much, Peter. Richard, congratulations. You're the first man through. What's it feel like? Oh, it's incredible. I've waited for this day for a long time. And... I'm very excited. You've come in with a lot of pre-race favouritism. You pumped the fist when you got through. Is it all going to plan? Well, so far, I'm just trying to win each race I go in. That's about it. And I'm certainly pretty excited to be here. Just obviously, that was a, the main goal to make the gift final. And anything can happen from there, so I'm pretty excited. Congratulations. You're the first man through. Well done. Thanks very much. And the time is officially 12.09. They've rounded it down. Richard Hankin, very impressive in beating a couple of quality runners too, it must be said. In Ian McFarlane, 12.27. Aaron Rouge Serrett in 12.29. So in sprinting terms, Chris Perry, that .18 of a second, that's a big gap. That is a two metre gap. That's comfortable. That is a very comfortable win. It's about down to where the lane ropes, as we're looking at the finish line. It is a very comfortable win. If you won by two metres every time, You'd be a very happy person. Peter Walsh in fourth spot in the first of the semi-finals. There are the runners going down for the second of the Australia Post Store Gift semi-finals. A couple of very interesting runners here, including Isaac Ntimia, who is 25 years of age and 12.31 in his heat. Bronze medalist in the 2008 Nationals. He comes out of red three metres. Adrian Mott, the 2006 winner, white, 3.75. Robert Marks making his stall debut in blue, 4.25. And then we have Thomas Scott, the 22-year-old winner of the 2006 Bay Sheffield in yellow, 4.75. Sam Jamison making his fourth appearance here at stall from Williamstown in green, six metres. Andrew Howell in pink, 7.25. Coached by the 84 winner, Paul Singleton. And Tommy Name, 24 years of age is in black, the personal trainer runner-up in the Ballarat gift of 2008. Isaac and Timia, very interesting runner here, Chris Perry. Big Isaac, gee, he was good on Saturday. It was He's run 12.30 um, and did it easily on Saturday and looked very impressive. He, got, he from the, uh, ran third in the Australian titles this year and uh, he's going to put in a big, big effort, I think. I, I like him as one of the favourites to win this. And there is the man who enjoyed his great moment back in 2006, Adrian Mott, trained by Steve Brimacombe, and he did it so easily that he even had time to celebrate before the line back there in 2006. But tough for him, even though he's right in the mix here at 3.75 metres. He went 12.43 in running second in heat 17 on Saturday. And the other of the men to watch here, probably the man in green, that man Sam Jamison from Williamstown. His uh, right, sister is already line, through to the you. finals of the women's yeah, gift. Uh, he's made the semis every no, time he's fun. been here. This is his fourth appearance, 21 years of age. He ran 12.59 on Saturday. And did it easily too, Peter. He's, he's tr um, stable. Nick Fiedler trained um, Sam Jamison. They are very confident. Last night they were expressing that this, this is the uh, the time for Sam Jamison to stand up. They know he's got the, one of the harder semi-finals with Big Isaac there. And he, they know that he's got to really run hard. Make it quick, mate, if you're going to have a break. Started just keeping the runners on their toes here. 
One or two little adjustments. Now, Chris, the breeze. We can see from the flags behind the runners that it appears to be coming from right to left as we look at it down the track. Now, you would think that that's probably going to advantage the men towards the left of the screen, the limit markers. They get a bit of protection, a bit of cover. Well, that's right, Peter. On, on the weekend, they ran in on Saturday, sorry, they ran into an absolute wall of a headwind. So even having a slight tail breeze is going to be good. They're going to be protected. But uh, Big Isaac is going to be an absolute powerhouse coming down in the red lane. And even look out in the, in the uh, to Tommy Neem, out in the black. He was one of the favourites on Friday night. So he's not going to be out of it either. And Thomas Scott, as we said, won the Bay Sheffield in 2006 as coached by Tony Fairweather. He's the man in yellow. And Tony Fairweather was the man who coached yeah, Josh yeah. Ross to those two victories, including that famous one a few years ago. There's Isaac and Timia. 25 years of age, world championship representative in 2003. Giving away starts of up to six and a half metres in this, the second of the semi-finals. And Timia left very well. The man in black, Tommy Neem, giving them something to chase. Jamison got a great start. He's the one at halfway. And Timia's coming hard now. Jamison gets over the top of Neem. And Timia running on well, but Jamison gets there from Neem and, and Timia. But Jamison, pretty impressive. Sam Jamison, 21 years of age, wins nicely in the second of the semi finals. Well, that was a fantastic run. The, the stable were on the money. They thought that he was um, took it easy on Saturday. But look in the green. He's powered away. Tommy Neem out in the black has run a sensational race to keep him honest. Big eyes are coming through it late in the red. But Sam Jamison sort of switched on and he ran through in a brilliant run. I think that'll be even faster than the first semi, Peter. Similar dominant performance to the first of the semis won by Richard Hankin. But very impressive is Sam Jamison, 21 years of age, through to the stall gift final. Sam, uh, well done on that one. The second heat, or the second semi was one everyone was talking about. You had a tough race ahead of you. Yeah, a lot of good competitors. A lot of guys, a lot of fast guys behind me. I was going to have to push. Um, but just set myself for it. Heard the gun, went, that was it. How was it coming down the stretch though? You had the, some big names coming in behind you, including obviously a guy that's won it here a couple of years ago, and also uh, a guy, a rising star of Australian athletics. Yeah, look, I mean, it's always interesting sort of, you know, looking at your heat beforehand, but once you get on the blocks, you know, everybody's faster than you until you beat them. So, um, yeah, just going down and uh, glad to win. You were pretty confident after the heat. How confident are you after the semi? Uh, oh, it, it, it'll instill you with confidence, but, you know, that's one race. The next race is totally different, so reset everything, go about my business and uh, just try and do it again. Congratulations, Sam. Good luck in the final. Thank you. Well done to Sam Jamison there, through, and it could be a very big day for the Jamison family, as we said. His sister already through to the finals of the women's gift, and we'll be taking a look at that a little bit uh, later on, and hopefully being joined by the new world champion, Tamsin Lewis, will be joining us up here in the box. So it'll be great to see her, Chris, and congratulate her on that wonderful achievement. And what an outstanding effort that was. All right, we're just about ready for the third of the semi-finals now of the Australia Post Stall gift. Runners just adjusting their blocks onto the correct marks. So let's check out the start list for semi-final number three. And uh, the difference between the red runner and the black runner here, 6.5 metres. Otis Gar of Queensland, the reigning national 100 metres champion, comes from the red 3 metres. Brandon Gallick, 3.75 metres in white, making his stall debut. Adam Burbridge from blue is 6 metres. Runner up to Andrew Pym back in 2001. Sean Fletcher, yellow, 6 metres. The long jumper. Kevin Britton from green, 7.5 metres. Plays for the Grovedale Footy Club as well as running. Liam Shepherd from pink, 8.25 metres, third in the 2008 Keeler gift and Bradley Letton from Huntfield Heights in South Australia is the man in black, 9.5 metres, a dual winner of the Loxton gift and a finalist in the 2005 Bay Sheffield. This though, Chris, is the man to watch. The reigning 100 metre Australian champion won it in sense. What a fantastic race that was. It was. A couple of weeks ago, absolutely brilliant. Into a bit of a headwind, he's run 10.53 I think was the time. 
So he's going to be right in this. It's going to be interesting from his point of view. He's used to running on grass, as he said, when he was, when he was younger. But in the pro starts, where you have to give away, as you say, six and a half metres to some pretty handy runners as he's going forward. And there's Liam Shepherd, who's coming out of pink, as we said, third in the Keeler Gift in 2008. Runner up in the Bernie Gift this year as well. So he's got some form on his side. Otis Gower is coached by Daryl Walson, who was an Olympian back in 2000. Actually finished third in the Stall Gift back here in 2001. So not only does he want to do well for himself, he wants to get one up on his coach. Or two up and, and win it. <laughs> First things first, though, yeah. you've got to get through to the final. So the men we're watching here, that man, Otis Gower, 24 years of age, the national champion from red, Liam Shepard, pink, and also Sean Fletcher in yellow, perhaps, worth watching. Ah! Otis Gower seemed to stumble a little at the start there. Now he's recovering his composure. Fletcher coming through in the yellow in the middle of the field, and the blue Burbridge also going well, and here comes Gower. He's going to get them. Otis has done it. Got there in the last metre or so over Adam Burbridge. I'm not sure that his start was the greatest one he got, but he still had the ability to get over the top of them. And doesn't the crowd love the back marker coming through? Otis, he stumbled out of the start, as you can see in the red. You're right, Peter. But he's starting to pick them up. We're about halfway now. In the blue is Adam Burbridge. He started to put the... And Gower just goes straight past him in the last 20 metres. I don't think the time's going to be there, though, Peter. It was not as fast as the early two, but Otis Gow, what a, what a season he's had. And the other thing is, too, that with Richard Hankin and Sam Jamison being so impressive, he's going to have to get a better start. He's going to have to get the best possible start, but the good thing is he's there in the final and he's with Ian Cup. He certainly is, Peter. Otis, the boys are talking about the start. Was it the one you needed, or did you have to fight back all the way? No, I just uh, kept it relaxed and... Uh, I just knew it wasn't the greatest starts, but here comes the final. Just crack the start, finish through to the end, we relax. The crowd was cheering. You could see the stand at Central Park was really starting to throb with you guys coming home in, in red. What's it like when the, the crowd's cheering here? Oh, especially when you come first. It's, uh, it's a big buzz, but uh, it's good to see there's a lot of people out here today, especially on the last day. And... Uh, Thanks to all those people that are coming out and getting sunburned all day and all weekend, and uh, and uh, if if you know if whatever happens in the final, having a fantastic time here in store. I tell you that. Congratulations! It could be another title for you, 100 metre national champion, and maybe the stall gift uh, winner as well. Yeah, I'm not counting my eggs before they hatch. <laughs> Otis Gower, Peter. Yeah, well, the good thing is he's there. He's in the final. One of three men to get through officially in 12.59 his time. So the time compared to the first two, just a little slower, but he's there. He's in it to win it. Adam Burbridge second in 12.67. Bradley Letton third in 12.76. So we have three semi-finals down and still three places available in the Australia Post Stall gift. When we come back, Ben Vickery, the man who was once a boxer, turned to running after a knee reconstruction. Can he make it through to the final? We'll find out when we come back to Central Park on the other side of this break. Making news, two foreign students feared dead after being swept from rocks on Phillip Island. A search is underway for a Canadian bushwalker missing in the Yarra Ranges National Park. The twin tunnels on Melbourne's East Link Tollway named Melbourne and Mullum Mullum. And Britons are now experiencing an unseasonal white Easter. Melbourne can expect possible storms today at top of 27. It's the first time the black team face elimination. They've been together from day one. They formed an incredible bond through the good times and bad. Now, one has to go. Biggest loser tonight. The effectiveness of Dynamo with a boost of Saad is also available in powder. Collar stains, cuff stains, sock stains, all gone in one easy step. Dynamo with a boost of Saad. Impressive results first time, every time. In everybody's digestive system, there's a balance of good and bad bacteria. But everyday diet and lifestyle factors, fatty foods, alcohol and some medications can throw out this balance. Have you had your in a health plus today? 
Melbourne's tunnels are critical to keeping our city moving. To keep them safe, don't change lanes in a tunnel unless you really need to. If you do, give enough warning to other drivers. And if you break down and can't drive out, stay in your car. A response vehicle will come along to push you out. If we all keep these things in mind, we'll enjoy safer conditions through our tunnels. Authorised by the Victorian Government, Melbourne. It's Akmal Live and Uncensored. Statistically, mechanics are the most likely people to suffer from impotence. So just imagine this mechanic in bed. Yeah, sorry, darling. Won't be ready till Thursday. Now playing at the Forum till April 13. Tickets on sale now from Ticket Day. What if you could lose weight without losing your lifestyle? What if you could eat out and still lose weight? What if you could eat all your favourite foods? What if you could get advice on how to keep the weight off from people who've done it? And access online tools 24-7. What if you could join Weight Watchers for $15 and save over $35? What if you called Weight Watchers now on 13 19 97? Become part of the dance experience. Visit 10.com.au slash dance for your chance to win a Holden Astra CDX three-door coupe valued at over $31,000. This is your chance to take centre stage. Entries close soon. Don't miss out. Debts, credit cards, repayments, phone calls. We can help you piece your financial future back together. Call Fox Himes now on 133328. That's 13DEBT and free yourself from debt. We're faster, we get more skill, we get the stamina. You know, when it comes to the physicality of the sport, the African Americans have the advantage. It just comes natural to us. I mean, you gotta look back at our ancestry, because we were born warriors. It's natural instinct. It's like a killer mentality. If you look at the way a black male is built, we're more muscular, stronger. You wanna be like us? <laughs> Three down, three to come. Richard Hankin, Sam Jamison, Otis Gower through to the store gift final of 2008, sponsored by Australia Post. And we're coming up to the fourth of the gift semi-finals on a beautiful day here. There were predictions of rain. We've got our fingers crossed that we'll get through. Runners about to go down on their blocks for the fourth semi-final. Matt Davies in red from Queensland, three metres. Clay Watkins in white, 4.75. Matt Hargraves, blue, 6.5. Matthew Callard, a finalist last year in yellow, 7.5. Perhaps one of the favourites, Ben Vickery from green, nine metres, the former boxer. Andrew Flanagan from pink, 9.5 metres. And Peter Dudkovitz from black. The 27-year-old winner of the Bendigo 120 in 2007 goes out of black. Matt Davies from the red is going to be hard to beat, but he's giving Ben Vickery six metre start, Chris Perry. To do, but I like the idea that Ben Vickery, the traditional Easter bunny, and uh, on Saturday he ran in his black socks, but I don't see he's got the black socks on today. Well, he also ran in his lucky Iron Maiden singlet, and you can bet that he's got that on underneath the green silks. Look at that. It's a big gap between Vickery and Davies. Start important for all runners, especially for Vickery, though. Vickery commenced brilliantly from the green. He's already in front as they approach the halfway mark. Davies is going to have a big task. Vickery commands the race at the moment. Davies is running on very strongly. Oh, gee, just failed. Vickery has just won, but that was a terrific effort from Matt Davies to get so close at the end. Ben Vickery, I thought, had it in his pocket, 12.24, but he had to fight. Well, he had to use all his reserves in the last 20 metres. We'll see, go back to the start. He got a reasonable start, but Matt Davies is in the red. So we're approaching about halfway. And it looks like Vickery has got it in control. But here comes Matt Davies. Vickery's starting to bobble up and down. You can see his head started to move around, which is what he did on Saturday. And is not a great sign for a sprinter in terms of under pressure. And he's got through but he'll need to stop bobbling his head at the end. Well, he's going to be under a lot of pressure in the final, remember, because Hankin comes from seven metres and Jamison comes from six metres. And the man who pressured him there, Matt Davies, came from three metres, so he wouldn't have even been aware of him until the last little bit. But he's there, Ben Vickery, 
The Iron Maiden singlet has proven lucky again. Terrific run by that man, though, Matt Davies, from three metres. He was uh, third in the Nationals in the 200 to Daniel Batman, and he ran like a 200-metre runner, didn't he? He was strong at the end. Yeah, he was flying over the last 30. All right, let's head down to Ian Cohen, who's got Ben Vickery with him. Yeah, it was certainly tight at the end there, Peter. He's got the, uh, the lucky Iron Maiden T-shirt on as well. Is that what's getting you home, Ben? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, whatever does it for you, I guess. Really, uh, it was lucky for me, so be lucky again. I know that you were out here late yesterday afternoon with your coach. You had a look at the finishing gates. You practised your dives towards the end there. Did yeah. that help get you over the line too? Yeah, it's just another thing to remember. And, you know, all credit to the back markers. They're good runners, so you've got to do everything you can to win. Could you hear him coming? No, but I felt him the last two metres. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's just the way it is. You've turned it back on boxing, you got back on pro running. What's the boxing going to help deliver to you to maybe grab a 2008 Australia Post all gift? Oh, I'm not sure. A bit of strength. Um, determination, I guess. Yeah, that'll certainly help. Good luck with it, Ben. Cheers, thank you. Well, the one thing you've got to have as a boxer is self-belief when you get into the squared circle, and Benjamin Vickery will have that 12-24 officially over Matt Davies, 12-26. Peter Dudkovitz finished in third in 12-46. So Vickery through, and we have now two places remaining in the Australia Post Store gift final of 2008. Semi-final number five coming up. And there's a great story in this one. The man on the far right of your picture. We'll talk about him in just a moment. Here's the start list. Keith Sheehy from Newcastle in Adelaide, 24 years of age from Red, 3.25 metres. Craig Brown, the winner of the 2000 Bay Sheffield, 2001 in Burnie, making his 11th appearance here, 4.75 metres. Stephen Landers from Toowoomba, a self-trained athlete, 24 years of age, is in blue. Greg Ayres from Yellow, 6 metres. Semi-finalist last year, Aaron Stubbs, 17 years of age from Green, making his stall debut, 6.75. Brett Robinson, the former beach sprint champion, runner-up to Adrian Mott here in 2000. 2006, 7.5 metres, and Peter O'Dwyer, who is competing in his 16th semi-final of the store gift from 10 metres. We'll talk more about him in a moment. Keith Sheehy from Newcastle, quality runner, won the Bay Sheffield going back a few years ago now, Chris Perry. Yes, and he ran very well on Saturday, Peter. He was injured at the Nationals. I was talking to him on, on Saturday, and he was, he was injured, didn't run as well, and he feels that he's now peaking for today's event, which I think will be an absolute he will run very well i think that he will be one of the favorites in this in this semi-final he ran third in the 200 meters at the nationals in 2007 so as you said a quality athlete but he's got to give just on seven meters to peter o'dwyer 16 semi-finals that has to be some sort of record 42 years of age this man from ballarat he's running in his 21st successive store carnival he was runner up here to scott antonich 20 years ago yeah. in 1988, also a finalist in 1999. It's a great story. Can he get through to another final? He's going to be, as Chris said before, the Easter Bunny. Get on your marks! Keith She gets down on the blocks, the 24-year-old giving away almost seven metres start to the outmarker. Brett Robinson, a quality athlete, two in pink. So O'Dwyer and Robinson may force each other along early. <laughs> away now, O'Dwyer's start not great. Robinson got a better start than him. She got a good start from Red. Still O'Dwyer leads from Robinson. Now she starting to put in the big strides. He's coming hard. The Red's gonna get up. She's got there in the last little bit. From Peter O'Dwyer, the start probably cost the veteran, but she has run a great race from 3.25 metres and gobbles them up in the last metre or two. Yeah, as you say, Peter, that uh, O'Dwyer didn't get a great start out there in black, but he's held them out for a long way. Kid, she seems to have the rest of the field covered. But we're at about the 80 metre mark now, and Peter O'Dwyer is still in front because she just gets him on the line. Peter has a look across and thinks, oh, I've just missed that one. But a great run by Keith Shee over the last 20 or 30 metres. He ran like a back marker should. He's swallowed them up, run consistent, run calm, run relaxed. And that is good news for Otis Gower too because there's going to be a man back there with him and Ian Cohen, it's good news for Keith Shee as well. There's going to be two on the back marks. Yeah, certainly is good news for Keith. Congratulations. Another man in red getting through. Well done. Thank you very much. I feel like I've got more to give to the final. 
How much more to give? It's going to be very, very tough. This is the ultimate pro running race. What else have you got left? I've just got to work on that start a little bit more. Um, and then I'll be right up there. I know I can do it. Your coach, Tony Fairweather, was the man that got Josh Ross over the line here twice. You moved to go from South Australia to go and uh, learn under him. What's he taught you? Yeah, well, I've been with him for uh, just over seven months now. He's really brought the best out of me. Fantastic coach, very passionate, and knows how to deliver at big events. You're going to have Otis Gower down there in the back mark with you. What are you going to learn from him and how are you going to approach the race? I'm a seasoned pro runner. I know how to do this. Uh, I think I'll, I'll have his number. Congratulations. Good luck, Keith. Thank you. Keith Sheehy oozing confidence there after semi-final number five. His official time, 12.53. So the comparison time-wise from the first couple of heats doesn't favour these athletes. The wind was uh, in that one plus 2.6 metres per second. So they had a big tailwind, 12.53. Peter O'Dwyer, 12.58 seconds. Stephen Landers, 12.66 was third. All right, down to the sixth and last of the semi-finals. Just one place remaining for the crack at history. And also $40,000 to the winner. And here's the field. Stephen Tucker from New South Wales, 3.5 metres in red. Brett Jovanovic in white, 5 metres, making his stall debut. Daniel Steinhauser in blue, 5.75 metres. Semi-finalist last year, Clint Yulden, who was runner-up to Jaron Pearce in 2000, comes out of yellow, 6.75 metres. Nathan Dixon in green from 8 metres, one in Ballarat in 2006. Bradley Peters from pink, 8.25 metres. Also trained by Tony Fairweather, like Keith, she uh, Keith Sheehy in the previous, won the Maryborough gift this year. And Evan King, well, we talk about evergreens, he has made the final four times. Can it be five for Evan King? He's off black 10 metres, the 37-year-old. First of all, Stephen Tucker, WA State Champion at 100 metres, a quality athlete, Chris. He ran, he ran very well on uh, on Saturday. He was in the same heat as what one of Bradley Peters, so he's repeating what he had to do on Saturday. They so both ran very well. They ran into what we called the wall on Saturday. They had a four-metre headwind. So... These guys, Tucker and Peters, who is going to come out of um, out of pink, are going to be the pick out of these out of this semi-final. Now Bradley Peters, as we said, Tony Fairweather, his trainer, Mary Brigiff winner in 2008. He won the Bill Howard 100 here back in 2002. So he's been around for a while now, 31 years of age, experienced athlete, and experience counts for a lot. Here at Stall, and uh, the other man that we were talking about, Evan King. Well, every year he comes here, he says he needs the money because he's got daughters. And he needs to pay for the weddings. He's been in the final four times. Runner-up to Daniel Millard here back in 1997. He doesn't know how many times he's been here. He said it's his 16th or his 17th appearance, and he always acquits himself well. Get on your marks. But can we get another one from the back mark through Stephen Tucker, or will it be? The likes of Bradley Peters in pink and Evan King in black. The two oldest men in the field are the two best handicapped on the outmarks. Stephen Tucker with plenty to chase. And away they go. Peter's start was pretty good. He accelerates past Evan King now. Tucker's got a big task from back there. Peter's looks to have control. Tucker is running on very strongly, but it's going to be Peter's who wins from Tucker and King. 12.20 the time. Look, out of the blocks, he wasn't great, but his acceleration in the next five metres was outstanding. Yes, well, let's have a look at the, the block start. He didn't get away all that well, but as he, after going 20 metres, he's gone straight past Evan King. Evan's latched onto him now, hasn't let him go, and here comes Stephen Tucker in the red, flying at the end. But Peters has won that by a good two metres and comfortably a comfortable victory, Peter, if you can have one. Yeah, he looked pretty good. Time's not bad either. Around the 12.20 mark, we'll confirm that for you. But it really puts him in the mix, along with the first couple of winners in Sam Jamison, and uh, Otis Gower as well, probably, but Richard Hankin has been the one early on who made the impression. So let's hear from our final of the semi-final winners in Bradley Peters. Yes, thanks, Peter. The last man in, Brad Peters. Uh, congratulations. You've got yourself a, a berth in the 2008 Australia Postal Gift Final. Uh, yeah, no, very, very happy about it. You're going to be the man out front. You're going to be the Easter Bunny that they're all chasing. How are you going to approach the final? Uh, just smack it out and um, see how I go. No stopping. 
You're also working with Tony Fairweather as well. Yes. How's he going to be? Because you've got a couple of runners in now. Oh, he'll be happy. <laughs> you know, he's, uh, he's one of the best coaches going around, so, uh, yeah, he's done really well. What's it mean for you to come here to stall and take the poss possibility of taking away the trophy? Uh, it means everything. I've been uh, thinking about stall from, you know, probably nine, ten years of age, watching it, always wanted to come here. It's just a privilege to run on, uh, on Central Park. It's awesome. Well, good luck in the final. Well done, Brad. Thanks very much. Bradley Peters, the sixth and last man through to the final. Now, he's going to come from 8.25 metres, so he's not going to be the outmarker. Let's confirm the result here in semi-final number six. And Bradley Peters, well, the time, pretty good, 12.19, so that's not too bad. And, of course, the wind readings are going to be important. We'll get those for you as the afternoon progresses from the semi-final. Stephen Tucker, second, 12.27. Evan King, brave third, 12.30. But Peters won't be the outmarker, interestingly enough, Chris, the outmarker is going to be Ben Vickery from nine metres. Yes, well, it's 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 as it's panned out, the semi-finals. We've got two, three little blocks. The guys that have run 12:0, the guys that have run just on 12:2, and then there's the 12:5 guys, and they're the back markers. So they've got a bit of work to do to catch these outmarkers. So Gow is going to be off three metres. Sheehy is going to be off 3.25 metres. You've got Jamison off six, Hankin off seven. And then it'll be Peters off 8.25 and Vickery off 9. Gee, it's an intriguing final, it's really. absolutely fantastic. You know, each each athlete has their own race in, betw in between each of the, uh, between yeah. themselves. And that's going to be a real test for them to break that, that contact and go away from them. And quite often we sit here and we think this man is going to be an overwhelming favourite in the gift, but it would be a brave man who would have an outright selection at the moment. Perhaps Richard Hankin, but who knows? The gift drawing closer, but we've still got a lot more entertainment to come on this Easter Monday at Central Park installed back with more action right after this. Brand new season of NCIS returns 8.30 Tuesday, and it's got everyone talking. Talking to me? You talking to me? Find out why this season is one of the highest rating dramas in the US. Get ready for more action. More drama. And more suspense. In this season, get ready to be blown away. Tony's car. <gasps> oh my God. Tony. New NCIS returns 8.30 Tuesday. The effectiveness of Dynamo with a boost of Sard is also available in powder for a more powerful clean than ever before. I tried Dynamo with a boost of Sard and it's fantastic. It removes those really tough stains. Collar stains, cuff stains, sock stains, all gone in one easy step. I noticed a big difference. Dynamo with a boost of Sard. Impressive results, first time, every time. The huge snooze clearance is on now. With huge savings store-wide, you'll be hugely disappointed if you miss out. So hurry, this clearance is for seven days only. Why just sleep when you can sleep well with snooze? These days, it seems you can claim almost anything. But there's one thing that's independently tested. It can't just be bought. It must be earned. The Heart Foundation Tick. Born to fiddle? Then you'll love the Nokia 6500 with a 3.2 megapixel camera. Free on three's $49 cap. Every month you'll get $300 of calls and SMS, plus $140 of free calls to anyone on three, anytime. It's good to be three. Too many debts? Need to reduce your payments? Been refused a consolidation loan? We have the solution. Call Fox Symes now on 133328. That's 13 debt and free yourself from debt. G'day, Bob. <laughs> oh, hi, Dave. Uh, I hate to ask. No, no, yeah, you can't, can't use the car, mate. No, um, uh, there's been a bit of an emergency. Um, uh, Jan's twisted her ankle. Uh, I have to go and get her. Hey, right, babe. Hi, Jan. Uh, Hey Dave. Uh, this isn't Jan, this is not Jan, this is uh, Jan's twin sister, Simba. What? Sim yes. Want a better excuse not to lend your car? How's 20% off our comprehensive car insurance when you name only two drivers? GIO. We don't just listen, we do.
The Doorbuster Door Sale is on this weekend at Doors Plus for four days only. Save up to 50% this weekend only at the Doors Plus four-day Doorbuster Sale. Ends Monday. Visit the Doors Plus showroom today. Doors Plus, no fuss. Monday. Mondays are hard work. Mondays can be uphill. You start a diet on a Monday. You get Monday-itis on Monday. Lots of songs have been written about Mondays. And on Mondays, more people play on holidays. At Australia Post, we organise passports, travellers' checks and foreign currency. You can do your personal banking and pay bills before you go. So you'll enjoy more of every day. Australia Post, part of every day. So it looks like being an intriguing prospect, a 2008 Australia Post store gift. A wonderful final in front of us, and that is round about an hour away from now. So there's going to be plenty of activity in that area, in the betting ring. Let's find out the latest. Ian Cohen is on the spot. Yeah, thanks, Peter. It certainly is a hive of activity, plenty of dollars changing hands. I'm here in the betting ring with John Henry. And John, like a good fine wine, it seems to be all about Jamison's run this year. Well, he's run the time, it's up the others to beat him now, and he's, all the others have got the pressure on him. A tree's on, it looks like he's going to be very hard to beat. The only one close to him on time through the semis was Hankin. Uh, the others have long odds in the civility. OK, take us through the board quickly, Gower on top there. Right, you've got $8 on Gower, 26 Shea, three's on, $1.30 Jamison, $4 Hankin, which is 3 to 1, $12 Peters, $13, and $6 Victory, which is $7, and that's probably the way they'll finish. Thanks very much, John. Could be a big day for the Jamison family, Peter. John Henry there making Sam Jamison a very hot favourite. Three to one on. I think Chris Perry is entitled to be favourite. I don't think he's a threes on chance, though. Well, it's going to be very interesting. At three, threes on, that's a, a red hot favourite. I don't think he won uh, convincingly enough from Hankin to be a threes on favourite, but that's the weight of the money. And the interesting thing about the Australia Post store gift final is that we're going to have a couple of races within themselves, as you said, because Gower and Sheehy are going to be worried about themselves early, and then basically the other four are in a bit of a race early. Now, is there time for tactics in 120 metres? Well, there's time, time to panic. That's the, the one thing that uh, Sam Jamison's got to be aware of, that his, uh, his immediate rival is Richard Hankin. They've got the two fastest times up and Jamison's got to give him one metre. What Jamison has to remember, it's, it's pretty obvious, it's 120 metres, but sprinters try and, will try and win it in the first 30. All right, from 120 metres to the time on at 1,600 metres of the Northern Grampian Shire Herb Hedeman Invitation Handicap. And there are the runners about to assemble. Let's take you through the start list, and Mark Tucker and Jeff Risley, the men from red and white respectively, are going to be giving away starts of up to 90 metres here to the outmarker who is the veteran in Richard Polkinghorne. Daniel Clark there, the runner from blue uh, from 15 metres is certainly going to be one of the hardest to beat here, Chris. Well, he ran second here last year and I think that he's going to give himself a, a big chance. Um, Jeff Risley, who's um, off, running off scratch, world championship representative over 800. He's got to step up to the 1600 this time. Now, Shane Thiel from the red and white from 60 metres, won here in 2006. And Andrew Russell, well, he'd be a pretty happy man coming here today, wouldn't he? Well, he would be, seeing that Hawthorne did so well yesterday, but being a Melbourne supporter, oh, I'm, I'm not all that in, thrilled about it. Well, why would Andrew Russell be happy with Hawthorne's win? Well, he's the fitness coach, Peter. Well, there you go. So they ran all over the top of Melbourne yesterday. They did. And for Melbourne supporters watching us around the country, I think it's going to be a long year. Anyway, back to the athletics. And there you have this field of 19. So patience is a virtue here because they've got the famous four laps, of course. Richard Pockinghorn, well, uh, he's the man on the outmark, as we said. He's been coming here for a long, long time. Well, Richard's 43, so he'd be in the veteran stage now. But he's run well over the weekend, ran very well on Saturday and some of the other distance events. So he's going to be out on 90 metres. Again, it doesn't matter whether they're sprints or whether it's a distance race. They've got to run the, you know, run the 1,600. Gradually, the back markers need to catch up to the, the front markers, and the front markers need to use their handicap. That's what it's there for. So it's fair enough to say you can't win this race in the first two laps, but you can certainly lose it if you get just too impetuous. Yeah. Yes, there's many, many, many a, a race here at Stall have been won by, by nerves and by being um, anxious, trying to, as you say, trying to win it in the first 20 or trying to win it in the first lap. 
So it's patience and you've got to be able to run your rhythm. Things that you've done every year, every day, every, at every training session. Run your rhythm and that, that'll get you through. $10,000 in prize money here all up. $4,000 to the winner. So it's nothing to be sneezed at. But look at the start that men like Mark Tucker and Jeff Risley. He's not there. Who is a scratching. Mm. And Jeff Risley's not giving away any start. A late scratching. So Mark Tucker, that's going to present a problem for him because he's going to be in no man's land for a long time. So there is the scratch marker, Mark Tucker, as they get underway and sort themselves out in the Herb Hedeman. So it's Richard Polkinghorne, the man in the purple and white colours on the left of your screen who takes them down the back straight the first time. It'll be interesting to see of the out markers which of these runners might make a bit of an early statement. And perhaps it's going to be the man in the grey and white, Rob Schwerkolt, who came from 85 metres, who looks as though he's intent to get to the front early and do a bit of the pacemaking. Well, he's got a very determined look on his face. He's, and he's taken it out. He's actually moving away from that pack, Peter, so that he's, he's setting the pace, making them chase him. Now, it's Bradley White who is moving up into second placing in the pink and white, number 15. He came off 75 metres, so he was 10 metres behind Schwerkold. Now, let's have a look for the back marker, and that is Mark Tucker. Well, he's certainly made up some ground in the first lap. Well, he's probably made up about, I would say, 30 metres from the out marker. So he's done a pretty good job in the first lap. And that's a hard task, isn't it? That you, He's in no man's land. He's got 20 metres to get onto the pack, and that's going to take a bit of an effort to get up there. But he needs to do it consistently and quickly or else he'll get just left behind. So Schwerkolt leads, that's White in second placing, and the orange and white, Leighton Carney was in third. There's a pack of five, and then there's a gap of probably, as you saw, round about 30 metres to the next of them, and the next uh, pack is headed by the man who is in blue and white, and that is Andrew Russell, the Hawthorne fitness coach who's going to get up and do the pacemaking work for the second pack, but we've got a tear-away leader now. Schwerkold has got away and leads by probably 25 to 30 metres at the halfway mark. He's ca playing catch me if you can, which is great tactics to use your front mark. And then there's the, the pack that's sort of sitting. He's open probably about a 20 or 30 metre gap there, Peter, to the polking horns and those guys in that pack. And then Andrew Russell and the rest of them leading number who are just about to tack on. Yeah, well, I like the look of that third pack because the third pack has now run across the gap and has joined the second pack. So they're getting a bit of a train going there. And you've got to see this man, Rob Schwerkold, as a bit of a sitting duck out the front. Even though he's got a lead of about 40 metres or so, the red runner, Mark Tucker, is beginning to tack on. And he's really getting around up into midfield in this pack. He was just over there on the left of your picture. So the Easter Bunny is Rob Schwerkold. Can he keep going? He's got about a lap and a half to go. It's going to be a very difficult task when you think that all of the other runners behind him are working in tandem. Yes, well, he's... He's opened up a good break, but with 500 metres to go, as you say, he is an absolute sitting duck. Tucker and the rest of the field are starting to really mow him down. Tucker is very close. Whether he can hold it for the last lap, that's going to be an interesting thing. Now, some of the runners who were off uh, limit marks are starting to re-establish themselves. And as they go out of the straight, it's fur colt clear. Now, Russell has got up into second placing, the man in blue and white. As they go into the back straight, the gap is probably about 20 metres or so. And then it looks like Michael Ride, the man in black and white, has also got up there. But here comes the red. Now Mark Tucker hits the gas and away he goes down the back. He's given away starts of up to 90 metres. Now he's had to surge a long way from home to get to second, but the leader's had enough. And Tucker's going to find himself in front shortly. The man in purple, Ben Toomey, is also running on well. Tucker's about to catch Furhold on the turn. Now Toomey starting to put in the big strides. The red runner takes the lead. Can he tough it out? He gets across from Schwerkolt now. Toomey's left with the last sprint at them though. Ben Toomey on the outside. He's got the kick. He was sitting in the pack and he's run home too well. And Toomey's going to win it. Tucker second. Schwerkolt brave in third placing. Terrific runs by the first three men. But Ben Toomey tactically ran a beautiful race.
Uh, and it's all about the tactics, but didn't Mark Tucker, he, he set it up running from scratch, but as you say, Toomey just waited until it was his time. Tucker got to the front, and then Toomey just ran him down. What a great race. Ben Toomey from South Australia. Here's the replay down the back. Even though his gap there was 30 metres, Chris, Rob Schwerkolt must have known that he was really a sitting duck for them. He had done so much hard work out in his own, and great credit to him. Tucker's had to go to the, uh, go into second place and lead that along, but you can see Toomey just tracking him. They've got to the top of the bend now. Toomey's just gone past Richard Polkinghorn and is tracking Tucker. Tucker now has to go past Surfold. And Toomey's just sitting, waiting. And it's a matter of whether he had enough gas in his legs. And they've just come into the straight now. It would have been nice, I think, for Mark Tucker maybe to just leave that sprint another 100 metres or so. But Ben Toomey was the one who ran the tactical race. And congratulations to Rob Schwerkolt for hanging on as well as he did. He did brilliantly in the end. Oh, he did all the work. He took them along for a long, long way. All right, Ben Toomey, the man who tactically won that race, is down with Ian Cohen. Thanks very much, Peter. Ben, the boys upstairs are talking about it being a tactical race. Take us through the 1600. Yeah, well, it's just, uh, I don't know what time was or anything, but it's sort of uh, bunched up. I expected everyone to sort of get into a pack with about two laps to go, and uh, just sort of had to be in the right position to try and kick away in the last 200, and sort of went pretty much to plan, so fairly pleased with that. What does it mean for you to take it out here, the Herb Hederman? Oh, it, I'm off overseas on Wednesday. I run for Straight World Uni Cross, so it uh, helps the finances a bit to get over there. And obviously, a race with great tradition, so pretty good to have a name on the trophy. So. And boys on the air, what do you think of Ben's win? What do you think? I think they're pretty happy. So uh, they'll be having a good night at Gift Hotel tonight, no doubt. Could be a big one tonight. Congratulations. So. Thank you. Woo! Certainly a massive one and part of the celebrations here at the 2008 Australia Post Stall Gift. Well done to Ben Toomey and well done to all of his supporters too. Lots more action to come here at Central Park. When we come back, the women's gift, the Provincial Victoria Strickland family women's gift over 120 metres, it might be the first step in a big day for the Jamison family. In 10 News, searchers hold little hope of finding two foreign students washed from rocks on Phillip Island. Police have confirmed that two teens were found in the boot of a car which crashed after a police chase near Cressy. And the Pope has used his Easter message to call for an end to violence around the world. Melbourne, possible storms on the way today, showers tomorrow with a top of 23. What must have cost Oprah $40 million? Oh my God! Wait till you see that! You won't believe how the celebs spend their cash on this revealing special. 7.30 tonight. Australia, this is your wake-up call. Chart Topper's Maroon 5 are touring for the first time in three years. One show only at Rob Labor Arena, March 30. With special guests, One Republic. Tickets on sale now at Ticket Tech. Presented by Frontier Touring and the Fox. What you doing? Making breakfast. A healthy breakfast. No artificial colours, no preservatives, and definitely no added sugar. Looks good. Just the natural goodness of whole grains. You wouldn't even know about whole grains, though, would you, Dad? Me? Nah. Vitabrits has 99% whole grain wheat with no added sugar. I guess I'm just not young enough to know it all. Vitabrits. Simple, natural goodness. It's a truly horrendous situation. You know, this wouldn't have happened in my day. And I, for one, am not going to stand for it. It's the furniture those rich people don't want you to have. Adriatic furniture. Exclusive, yes. Expensive, no.
Right from the very first taste of our new, stronger, smoother, 100% Arabica bean coffee blend, you'll notice a change at McCafe. So come into McCafe and try the delicious new blend yourself. We're faster, we get more skill, we get the stamina. You know, when it comes to the physicality of the sport, the African Americans have the advantage. It just comes natural to us. I mean, you gotta look back at our ancestry, because we were born warriors. It's natural instinct. It's like a killer mentality. If you look at the way a black male is built, we're more muscular, stronger. You wanna be like us? <laughs> It's been a fantastic day so far at Central Park and the action continuing here at the 2008 Australia Post Stall Gift. The gift itself drawing closer and just confirming the result of the Herb Hedeman from a little earlier on and it was victory to Ben Toomey and what a great tactical race he ran in 4.04.31 defeating the scratch man Mark Tucker in 4.04.32 and Rob Schwerkold was third, the man who made all the running in 4.04.56 so look at that point, 0.25 of a second between the first three at the end of 3,200 metres. Well there's more to just uh, foot running than uh, to entertain the thousands of visitors who flock to stall every year for the Australia Post Stall Gift Carnival. On Saturday, the Driscoll McElray and Dickinson Ladies' Day Festival featured fashions on the field, including free sepple bubbly, live music and plenty of activities for the kids. 35 entrants lined up in the fashions on the field with many dashing from the racetrack to the catwalk just to join the many local entrants keen to impress. And just as uh, is the case in the gift, there were some anxious faces on many of the starters as they awaited the judges' decision who would take out the major prizes. Second place was Morgan Dean, whose hat completed her outfit and taking out the $1,000 first prize. This year's Fashions on the Field winner was Belinda Carusi. Well done to Belinda. And the ladies all look fantastic here in Fashions on the Field. So from the catwalk, we are going to go to the racetrack and the next of our big events and that is the Provincial Victoria Strickland Family Women's Gift over 120 metres. Runners about to get down on their blocks as we look to the commentary box and Chris Perry and I are joined by a world champion, Tamsin Lewis. How does that title sit with you, Tam? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that title. Thanks right. very much. Congratulations. Thank you. It was a it was an entertaining season for me, and to finish it off with a world championship in the indoors was pretty exciting. We'll talk more to Tamsin in a moment. There's the lineup for the gift final, and Sally Jamison here from the Grey is a lady to watch. Her brother is the gift favourite later on. Laura Whaler all the way back on one metre. Melissa Kay from 0 0.75. Ooh. And a break. Just what you don't want, but it gives all of the other runners time to collect their thoughts. But for the breaker, it's not going to be happy news because they'll get pulled. So in the green, back to five and a half metres. Well, that makes things difficult for Lynette Mattingly. Let's have another quick look at the start list just before they do go away here. And uh, Sally Jamison, well, she has a start of up to 11 metres on Melissa Kay. And she was so impressive. Gee, it could be a big day for the Jamison family, Tamson. It could be, but I'm surprised Lynette broke, actually, because I've raced against her in the Bay Sheffield, and she's she's got big-time experience in that gift, and she's won it a couple of times. So that's pretty surprising that she'd break in the final. Well, nerves can do funny things to people, can't they? You've experienced that at the top level many times before with the competitors around you, and no doubt yourself a few times. It doesn't matter how many times you've done it, you still get the butterflies. Definitely. Get on your marks! So Lynette Mattingly dragged back a metre, back to five and a half. Her task becoming so difficult. The lady to watch here, though, Catherine Brennan in white at just 15 years of age. In blue, I should say. She is... The lady Set. who's going to take some catching. Jamison got away to a good start. Brennan also a good start from Blue. So it's Jamison the leader. Brennan starting to come through in Blue. Jamison giving them plenty to chase. Brennan's coming over the top of her now. The young lady is flying home and she's going to get up and win it. What a win by Catherine Brennan at 15 years of age.
coming to store for the first time. Sally Jamison gave them a lot to chase, but Catherine Brennan has got there at the end. What a performance by a 15-year-old. That was sensational. She got a pretty good start, but it was about here that she started to eat up the ground. She held her form brilliantly through the middle, and when the girls, she could obviously hear them coming, she just finished so strongly. She's a great junior sprinter for Victoria, and... Gosh, I think she's got a big future. If she can handle her nerves in an environment like this at 15, if she can go on, I think we'll see her representing Australia in the future. Excellent effort by Melissa Kay too from the Red who came from so far back giving away starts of up to 11 metres. 15 years of age on the big stage. What a moment for Catherine Brennan. Here she is. Absolutely what a moment for you, Catherine. Congratulations, the Women's Gift winner for 2008. A marvellous effort, and you go into the record books as one of the youngest ever winners at Stall. There's only been one other 15-year-old. Congratulations. Thank you. This... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm so, so happy, and it was a good race. Well done to all the other girls. You're at Loyola, your school. How do you fit in the schoolwork with the training? Take us through what is involved in your week so you can come here and become a stall winner. Um, I do training in the morning before school and then after school I do training as well. So not much time for homework, but yeah. You've got a pretty big crowd gathered here to help support you as well? Yep, it's, the crowd's awesome. Helps you um, lift and run your best. Catherine, you'll be back here next year to defend as a 16-year-old. Amazing effort. Thank you. Catherine Brennan there, Peter, and uh, what a terrific result going into the history books. Yeah, she'll be in the veteran category when she comes back next year, 16. Gee, she'll be experienced then. 13.93. What a moment for the young lady in beating Sally Jamison and Melissa Kay and Sally, no doubt hoping that her brother might be able to go one better in the Australia Post Store gift final. Coming up, the Asics, Bill McManus, 400 for men. For our Bondi heroes, saving one life is a deadly exercise. On a new episode, how will they save three people from drowning at the same time? New Bondi Rescue, 8 o'clock Tuesday. The Doorbuster Door Sale is on this weekend at Doors Plus for four days only. Save up to 50% this weekend only at the Doors Plus four-day Doorbuster Sale. Ends Monday. Visit the Doors Plus showroom today. Doors Plus, no fuss. from Dimatap, Dimatap Pain and Fever. Up to eight hours of fever relief, up to two hours longer than children's paracetamol. So kids can play for a really long time. What a relief, there's Dimatap. Flight Centre, the Northern Territory is on sale. Fly Qantas and stay at Ayers Rock for three nights from $659. Bonus, kids stay and eat free. Alice Springs for three nights from $749. Bonus, kids stay and eat free. Darwin for three nights from $895. And Kings Canyon for two nights from $139. Bonus, kids stay and eat free. If you're after the perfect holiday at a great price, call Flight Centre now on 131 600. What happens next is up to your insurance. With GIO Home Insurance, we'll quickly help you into alternative accommodation while we get things back to normal. GIO, we don't just listen, we do. Debts, credit cards, repayments, phone calls. We can help you piece your financial future back together. Call Fox Himes now on 133328. That's 13 debt and free yourself from debt. Come on down to Arthur Daly's Clearance House. Two locations, Melbourne and Geelong. Every day's a sale. Hey, Arthur, heaps of scarves, beanies and gloves. Sell them for one, two and three dollars. Great canvases and art supplies. And these are 30% off the normal price. Arthur, 50% off every book. And pay half at the counter. Stock changes every day. Arthur Daly's in two locations. Basements, 131 Mirable Street, Geelong and 37 Swanson Street, Melbourne. You're amazing, Arthur. Don't call me Arthur, son. Call me Dad. Mm -hmm. 
Monday. Mondays are hard work. Mondays can be uphill. You start a diet on a Monday. You get Monday-itis on Monday. Lots of songs have been written about Mondays. And on Mondays, more people play the holidays. At Australia Post, we organise passports, travellers' checks and foreign currency. You can do your personal banking and pay bills before you go. So you'll enjoy more of every day. Australia Post, part of every day. At the new time, 9.30 Tuesday. He's spent seven years on death row. But has he been wrongly accused? And is the real killer still at large? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Women's Murder Club, 9.30 Tuesday. Well, most of our attention this afternoon will be down the famous straight here at Central Park, but we're about to see two races around the circle, one full lap. And first of all, it's going to be the Essex Bill McManus, 400 metres. Clay Watkins, the man we just saw, is the back marker on nine metres. Derek Collins from Canberra, 17. Wallace Long Scafidi from South Australia, 19. Gary Mongta from Point Cook, 22. Lachlan Taylor from Taylor's Lakes. Don't know whether they named it after him, 22 metres. Andrew Sullivan from Ivanhoe, 27. Michael Marantelli from Tullamarine, 29. And perhaps Chris, the favourite, Paul Tancredi from Moreland on 30 metres. Well, I think the favourite will be Paul Tancredi. He ran a 46.53, which is a pretty good run out here, and he ran it on his own. So, Lachlan Taylor, as you're saying, he was he's probably the biggest threat between the two of them. Just been stood up, but it's probably between Lachlan Taylor and Paul Tancredi. Clay Watkins has got to get back off nine. Has got to give the out markers 21 metres. So that's a fair. It's a long way. To it's catch a long up. way, isn't it? Ready for the Essex Bill McManus 400. Well, we're going to have a take three. Just started going to make sure that they all get into the set position at the right time. Well, a bit of nerves, a bit of jostling going on at the, at the start line there. Well, that's the thing about this 400. It's different to the 400 that we see at Olympic Games and Commonwealth Games and that sort of thing because they don't run in lanes here. So there can be some argy-bargy. Clay Watkins, the back marker, underway in the Essex. Bill McManus and Tancredi is going to be the man who's going to give them plenty to catch, and he's gone hard early and gets away from Marantelli and Sullivan as they go into the back straight. Now, Monta and Taylor easing to the outside to get around them, and they're starting to go with each other down the back straight and putting in the big strides clear from Long Scafidi Collins. Watkins still last of all. Tancredi leads them with 200 metres to go. Coming off the back straight, he's nicely clear. Taylor in second place. The blue, Long Scafidi getting into third and running on strongly. Tancredi's gone hard. How much has he got left in the tank? Taylor's got to him and run by him. Long Scafidi running up towards second placing now. But Lachlan Taylor runs away and wins easily. Tancredi may have hung on for second. But Lachlan Taylor, he just bided his time. Whereas Paul Tancredi, by the look of it, Chris Perry, wanted to make a statement early. And maybe he made it a bit too early. Well, he had to use his mark, and he went off at the 30 metre off his 30 metre handicap and went hard. But Lachlan Taylor was watching going round the the bottom bend, and he went wide. So he was really committed to going down the back straight and trying to get in front, head off the pack, which is probably pretty smart tactics in the and and get to as far in front as you can. But as we're coming round with 100 metres to go, uh, Paul Tancredi is probably just bobbing up and down. It's starting to really hurt now, and Lachlan Taylor's come up on his outside. Really good form, really composed. Looks very comfortable at the end of a 400, if that's possible. <laughs> but he's um, run that, won that by about three or four metres. But uh, a great tactical run. We've been seeing some really good tactics. Well, let's hear from him. Just 19 years of age, he won the Stall 400 a couple of years ago and another victory here at Central Park. Indeed, Peter, another title. Lachlan, congratulations. Tell us about the 400. Uh, long 400 in the mind. How was it in the legs? Oh. Oh. Oh God, no words, God. I just can't believe that I did that again. But it's been a long weekend. Just eats away, think about it for the whole two days and just glad I could pull it off. Does it mean more doing it a second time or was the first win better? How, how compare them? To be perfectly honest, I, didn't, I never thought that I could top the last time. And I didn't, I came into this thing that I wouldn't care, but it just means so much more. It really does. Big night tonight? Absolutely. <laughs> Congratulations, Lachlan. Well Thank won you. and well run. Thanks.
And so it should be a big night tonight. Well done to the 19-year-old Lachlan Taylor. Victory again here at Stall. Tamsin Lewis is still with us, the world champion, the world indoor champion at 800 metres. And Tam, you've been coming here to Stall for a long time, so you can understand what Lachlan's feeling about coming back to this place. It's something special. It is definitely something special. I mean, I've competed at Olympics and world championship level, but I always enjoy coming back to Stall. The atmosphere is just electric down here, and, and um, to get a sash from Stall is, is pretty special. Well, of course, none of us would be here without the great support of the sponsor, Australia Post, and Ian Cohen has a very special guest with him. Thanks very much, Peter. I'm here with Dennis Attackador, the Corporate Sales Manager for Australia Post for Victoria and Tasmania. And Dennis, uh, great to have you on board again. Tell us about some of the history between Australia Post and the Store Gift. Yeah, thanks, Ian. This is actually our 14th consecutive year of being naming rights sponsor for the event, and we're really proud of that uh, achievement. The partnership's fantastic. Um, and look what a day we've got today and uh, it's really something that uh, Australia Post is really proud to be a part of. It's something you think long and hard about too. What are some of the benefits? Why is it so important for you to be attached to this event? Yeah, Australia Post is really committed to regional and rural Australia and with that in mind an event such as the Store Gift just ignites a town and it brings joy to not only the people here but the surrounding towns and people throughout Australia. It's, fant it's a fantastic feeling and uh, just overwhelming um, on a day like this. Well Dennis, congratulations on behalf of everyone from Australia Post uh, being a part of it. It's absolutely terrific and we hope there's many more continued years of success of the partnership. Great, thank you very much Ian. Dennis Great attack it all Peter. We do thank Dennis and Australia Post for their support here at Central Park. Here's the lineup for the Lorraine Donnan Women's 400 metres final sponsored by Endura Sports Nutrition and reading down the list, Tamsin Lewis, you know just about every one of these athletes. I've trained with a couple of them actually. There's a Cara White, a national ranked four hurdler, and she's she's a good runner over 400 as well. But um, I actually think one of the outmarkers is going to win because I know when I race them, they're so hard to catch. And Nick Fiedler trains five of the runners in this race. Cara White, Alice Platten, Tawana Merritt, Celia Cosgriff and Emma Poynton and Brad Carter trained Stephanie Mollica and Stephanie Lockhart so poor old Ramona Casey who's in green must feel the odd girl out. There's Stephanie Mollica, she's been around in a few events. Cara White the back marker here on 16 giving away nearly 30 metres start. Away they go in the Lorraine Don and Women's 400 and it's Emma Poynton off 45 metres who is going to be the lure for Cosgriff and Lockhart as they go down the back straight. A good gap, Ramona Casey in the green, she's out there by herself at the moment. Tawana Merritt getting up to her and then Platten, Mollica, White still together. They haven't really changed positions much down the back straight. Emma Poynton is still in front, now Lockhart getting into second placing and going strongly and she's going to lay it down to Poynton at the 200 metres mark. It's going up on the outside, Lockhart to take the lead from Poynton, Cosgrip bided her time down the back and now here comes Alice Platten with a strong run the blue, she's hooking to the outside and the white, Stephanie Mollica from a long way back, it's a great race, Lockhart's in front, the blue Platten on the outside and the white Mollica starting to get the big strides in and look at Cara White the red, right down the outside she didn't quite get there and I think Alice Platten might have just won in a thrilling finish they have put their all into the Last 100 metres, Cara White's come from absolutely nowhere, but I think that Alice Platten might have just held on to win. Oh, what a race. That was a fantastic race. It's always great at Stall when it's a close finish. Alice Platten ran in the men's race earlier and um, was very disappointed. I spoke to her after that race. She said it was a bit of argy-bargy and she got boxed in a bit, so she was pretty determined to win the women's final. Well, here's the replay, and there were so many runners just starting their runs at this stage. We had Cosgrip peeling off because she sat behind them and then all of a sudden Platten in the blue and then all of a sudden Mollica in the white and at this stage Tam, Cara White was no chance. Look how wide she had to go to get past the girls. That is a brilliant, brilliant run by Cara White, the back marker. Alice Platten, now the green, Ramona Casey was the one who got right up on the inside and oh. it is very, very tight there. So we're waiting on confirmation of the result, but I think Alice Platten might be able to have a word down there to Ian Cohen. What a gruelling race it was, Ian. Yeah, look, it certainly was an amazing race and an amazing finish. Alice, you've been kind enough to join us. Take us through the finish. It was an absolute mob gallop at the end, wasn't it? A bunch sprint. It was a great run, a great sprint, and I was just going the whole way, just trying to get to the line first. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> What sort of petrol have you got left in the tank when you get to the line like that and you've got three or four girls all coming at you? 
You just give it your all in, considering I've already run the Open 400 today. I think I had an hour and a half to back up, so extremely happy with myself. An amazing effort. What does it mean? Easter Monday, stall, you're a title holder now. Oh, it means so much. It's just fantastic. I, oh, I'm shocked. <laughs> Thanks to all my training partners who keep me going all the time and my coach, Nick Feeler. You're great. Congratulations, Ellis. Well done. Thank you very much. Well, I think the people in Narry Warren will be pretty happy. Well done to Alice Platten. We'll confirm the result because it was so tight there. Tamsin Lewis, our world champion at the indoor 800 metres. Tam, thanks for coming up and well done again. And we wish you well in the lead up to Beijing. Thanks very much. Tamsin Lewis joining us. When we come back, the elite athletes with a disability will be strutting their stuff at Central Park. In 10 News, searchers hold little hope of finding two foreign students washed from rocks on Phillip Island. Police have confirmed that two teens were found in the boot of a car which crashed after a police chase near Cressy. And the Pope has used his Easter message to call for an end to violence around the world. Melbourne, possible storms on the way today, showers tomorrow with a top of 23. What's this? My letter of resignation. Over the past 17 years, Jack's seen the worst crimes ever committed. So what is it about this case that makes him throw in the towel? A movie-length new Law & Order, tonight. The huge snooze clearance is on now. With huge savings store-wide, you'll be hugely disappointed if you miss out. So hurry, this clearance is for seven days only. Why just sleep when you can sleep well with snooze? If you have been taking a course of antibiotics, a probiotic such as Inner Health Plus may assist with maintaining the balance of good bacteria. Inner Health Plus, available at pharmacies and health food stores. Have you had your Inner Health Plus today? At Flight Centre, we go out of our way to find you the perfect holiday at a great price. London Airfare from $1,729. Bangkok Airfare from $875. Or well, this New Zealand package with airfare and seven days car hire from $599. Fiji Family Seven Night Package with airfare, breakfast daily and transfers from $1,319. Plus, right now get an exclusive 20% off Intrepid Tours through Asia. Call now, 131 600. Too many debts? Need to reduce your payments? Been refused a consolidation loan? We have the solution. Call Fox Symes now on 133328. That's 13 debt and free yourself from debt. These are blueberries. This is a toothpick. This is handy. This is sandy. This is drift wood. This is handy. These are meatballs. This is a V neck. This is handy. This is a t-shirt. These are glasses. This is handy. This is a gold fish. This is a moisture lock weave. This is handy. Handy Ultra. It's ultra handy. The most absorbent paper towel. What happens next is up to your insurance. With GIO Home Insurance, we'll quickly help you into alternative accommodation while we get things back to normal. GIO, we don't just listen, we do. Right from the very first taste of our new, stronger, smoother, 100% Arabica bean coffee blend, you'll notice a change at McCafe. So come into McCafe and try the delicious new blend yourself. The Stall Gift Hall of Fame contains a treasure trove of priceless memorabilia and history from the Australia Post Stall Gift. Many of the items have been donated from the families of the winners. 
The spirit of gift champions living on for future generations and the Hall of Fame allows visitors to stall the opportunity to experience the gift all year round and very shortly it will undergo a refurbishment and a new stall gift Hall of Fame will be in place when we arrive back here in 12 months time in 2009. Here's the result of that previous race and look at that it was one hundredth of a second first to second one hundredth of a second second to third Alice Platten the winner Cara White second, Ramona Casey sneaking up on the inside from nowhere and Stephanie Mollica wasn't far back behind them either. It was one of the most exciting races you could imagine. All right, time for another exciting race here for the elite athletes with a disability, the Bank at Post Invitational here at Stall. And we're going to be seeing some very familiar faces here. Speaking of familiar faces, a man who joins us in the commentary box every year as we take a look at the start list, Tim Sullivan, the three-time winner here, heading up the field. And joining us in the commentary box is a man who has a new nickname, Demolition Don Elgin who was in the celebrity race last year and, or last week, and nearly put Luke Darcy through the wall. Donny, hello. G'day, Pete. It's, it's really great to be here, and thank you so much for that welcome. What was going on there? I can't believe Luke Darcy thought it was the right thing to do, to slow down on a racetrack. <laughs> Well, these guys won't be slowing down. Tim Sullivan, we've mentioned, he's won this three times before. Who are going to be his hardest to beat? Yeah, I think we're, uh, we're probably going to see Timmy really struggle to get back up. One thing he does love to do is chase. I think uh, Benny Hall will be a, a serious contender. He's had a great season. And we cannot dismiss Matthew Cartwright, who also has had a good season. But I think it'll be great to see my mate, my uh, fellow amputee, Neil Fuller, out yep. there having a run. And he's got a decent sort of mark. So if he can get up an hour early, I think we'll, uh, we'll see Neil produce something special. So we have got uh, amputees, we've got uh, people with paralysis on one side of the body, intellectual disability, cerebral palsy, all of the elite athletes with a disability. Get on your marks! Overcoming their own battles to arrive at this point. And this really is a race that is coveted amongst the disabled athletes community. There's Tim Sullivan all the way back on red. So that is a look. long start. Sullivan heard the gun first, but he's got a long way to make up. The man in pink, the veteran Neil Fuller, is about to hit the lead. Here comes the white Aaron Lethleen running on strongly. Fuller in front. Lethleen is starting to gobble him up. It's going to be very close. Fuller's got there from Lethleen, and Tim Sullivan running home hard over the top. But Neil Fuller, at just a mere 39 years of age, a member of the AIS Hall of Fame, your fellow amputee, did the job, Donnie. Hey, I'll tell you what, good boy, Fuller. That was a, uh, a big run from him. He's been out of action for a while. He had a lot of big work commitments and things going on in his life and it's an incredible effort for him to get back here and make today something special for himself. Well he actually retired didn't he and now he's back in training and hoping for a possible relay spot for Beijing. That's right that's the thing that makes it so exciting so June 16 the Paralympic team's announced and I tell you what the way he's running he is every bit the uh, looking the goods for that. What about Tim Sullivan didn't he head up the ground at the end after giving away around about uh, 17 metres start to run on and get third that was a great effort from Sully. Indeed it was and I tell you what I said he liked to chase and he certainly hasn't proved me wrong on that it's a great effort to come in there third and, and all the boys indeed have a uh, have had a good run there and let's not forget Aaron Lethleen who uh, got into second placing too but congratulations to all of the athletes Don as I said it does mean a lot to them this race well that's right any time in a Paralympic year to get out there and, and to have a run on a big stage and there is no bigger stage than the Bank of Post Invitational for, for these athletes in this year so that's a great effort for all the boys 1381 the winning time for Neil Fuller 1388 for Aaron Lethleen and 14 1409 for Tim Sullivan after the Bank at Post Invitational for the elite athletes with a disability. And well done to all of them for being here and competing. Don Elgin, lovely to have you. It has been brief, but all I can say to you is one thing. Drive safely on the way home, please, mate. Indeed I will, mate. I've got the big red post van. It looks a treat going down the highway. Good to see you, Donnie. See you, mate. Don Elgin joining us here in the commentary box for the Bank at Post Invitational. Now we're getting closer to the gift. The Backmarkers Invitational, 120 metres. Look at the field here. Bowler Lawal, Isaac and Timia, Aaron Roos, Surratt, Matt Davies, Stephen Tucker, Brendan Cole, Joel Milburn, Adrian Mott, and there's only three metres between them here. So it is a very elite field. The judges are ready, and there shouldn't be much between them at the end here. So Bola Lawal, the Nigerian, has won the Ballarat and Baraman gifts, and he is an exciting athlete. We've already seen Isaac and Timia 
in the semi-finals of the gift earlier, bronze medalist in the 2008 Nationals, but there's that man, Bola Lawal. He is exciting to watch. Well, he was, he's had a sensational year, Peter. He's won two gifts, won the um, Ballarat and the... Um, Barramine. Barramine gift, thank yep. you. And this is the cream of, of the sprinters that are up here this weekend, and it's always a great race, isn't it? And good camaraderie between the runners too, even though everyone wants to win. They know each other really well. That's the sort of thing you won't see before the gift because of all sorts of reasons. Nerves, 40,000 at stake, but this is the prestige race. And these runners, whoever wins here can walk away and they've got bragging rights a bit. The man on the left, Adrian Mott, the 2006 winner. Joel Milburn in black, national 400 metres champion. Brendan Cole in pink, 400 metres hurdler. Represented Australia at the Commonwealth Games. Steve Tucker's a WA state champion. Aaron Roos Serret is a Victorian champion. And Timia, bronze medalist at the Nationals. And there's Bola Lawal. The back markers at stall. Lawal's start was very good. The yellow got a good start, Davies, and so did the blue, Rue Surrett. Rue Surrett in front at halfway. The green tucker starting to come through now. Rue Surrett still in front, though. He's commanding the race, and he'll win. It's Rue Surrett first, and probably uh, it was... Well, Davies was up there, and Tucker was up there for the minor placings as well. But Rue Surrett, a very strong effort from Aaron Rue Surrett, the 2008 Victorian champion. Well, he was uh, very, very impressive and very keen. Look at the blue, very quick early. That's one of his trademarks, he's very quick early. He's got up on the side of the yellow, which is Davies. The back markers can't get onto him and he's starting to power away from here. And that's the impressive part. From the last 20 metres, he's run away from them. And I think that the disappointment of his nationals and he's topped it off with the back markers at stall. I think he'd be a happy boy. Isaac and Timia got home pretty well too at the end of the race from the back marks. But as you said, the men from those two back marks, Bola Luwal and Timia, they just gave away too big a start because the men in front of them got really good starts and ran really strong to the halfway point. And that's the, that's the difficult thing is that these guys can run. Like um, Isaac had to give away to, to Aaron almost you know, three quarters of a metre. At the Nationals, he wouldn't have to do that. Yeah. All right, here's the result, and let's have a look at the time. 12.37 it was from 2.25 metres, so pretty handy time there for Aaron Ruse Surrett. Matt Davies, who ran so well in his heat uh, semi-final, I should say, where he was just beaten by Ben Vickery in second placing. Stephen Tucker did get third, and Isaac and Timia getting home into fourth spot in 12.55. So there are the other elite athletes in the invitation back markers, 120 metres final. All right, that paves the way. The big one is about to come up. It is time for the Australia Post stall gift. It's just around the corner. Now, what we're going to do is recap the semi-finals for you. And let's have a look at the trophy that uh, is being handed out. Here are the semi-finals. Now, the man to watch here, Richard Hankin out of pink. He was very impressive. It was, as I say, look in pink, second from the left. He's accelerated from about the 50 to the 80 metre mark. And he's shown them a clean pair of heels and a very excited boy. He's going to be one of the favourites, obviously. Time was good, 12.09 with a tailwind. No tailwind for Sam Jamison here in green. He's the gift favourite. Very good technician. Looks good as he's running through in the green. Streets away from um, Isaac Natia. And he was probably around the fastest or if not the, the best performance. Now, here's one of the more exciting semi-finals. Watch the man in red, Otis Gow. Well, the national 100 metre champion, he's got the online here at about the 50 to 60 metre mark. He's got to go past Burbridge and he has just got them on the line. And that's what the crowd come to see, the big back markers. Ben Vickery in green in semi-final number four was one of the favourites going in here. He accelerated well from 30 to 50. Starts to jump up and down in the one spot now as Matt Davies starts to come at him. But he is through to his store gift final. And another man from red, Keith Sheehy from red in semi-final number five. Very confident, Keith, to go further into this uh, in the store gift. You can see it about the 70 to metre mark. He's come alongside them, and that's a very good run from Keith. And he is confident that he can do well. It's going to be a tough task from back there. Watch the man in pink here, Bradley Peters. Well, he's, he's going to be the pocket rocket. He's got out in front of Evan King, who is in the black. And at the 70 metre mark, he's got this field covered. Steve Tucker tries to come at him, but 
Bradley Peters takes that out. It's going to be an interesting final. You're going to have three races in one, I think, Peter. Yeah, and as we said, nearly everyone had a tailwind. The only one who didn't was Sam Jamison, who ran 12.06, and he ran the fastest time. So on facts and figures, he should be the favourite. He should be the favourite. But as we know, we've been doing this for a long time. There's no certainty at stall. And the thing is, too, that many a gift can be won and lost in the next 15 minutes as we build towards the final. And whilst we do build, there's plenty of frantic activity down at the starting blocks as they just try to ease the nerves a bit. And at the other end of the track, down in the betting ring, there's also plenty of activity going on. Ian Cohen, what's the latest? Well, Peter, have a good look at this, the WJ Millard Perpetual Cup, because that is as close as you and I will ever get to this cup. Obviously, Chris has his own at home, some famous names on it, and that is what they are competing for in a very short period of time. John Henry's with us again. John, let's run through the list on the betting, starting with Gower at the top. Well, he's $9, and uh, 26 Mache, Jamison Steady at $1.40, Hank and a with the old five to two, three dollars fifty. Peters thirteen dollars, and Vickery at seven dollars. But uh, Jamison's got it sewn up. I've, all results coming through from everybody said that he can't get beaten. All right. So you think Ben ja uh, Sam Jamison's the man to, to beat? Yes. I, I just heard before that if they had run him in the nationals, he would have won that too. <laughs> OK, there you go, John Henry. But this is going to be the prize, of course, forty thousand dollars on offer. But this is what the runners want to take home. Famous last words, he can't get beaten. Well, we'll find out soon enough. 21 years of age, Sam Jamison about to run for a place in history. The youngest man in the field. Will he be the champion? We'll find out when we come back to Central Park. The gift is getting closer. funny about Russell's new girlfriend? Your sausage looked delicious. The hottest action happens downstairs. Oh, my friend Dick's here! I love Dick. Rules of Engagement, 7.30 Wednesday on 10. Monday. Mondays are hard work. Mondays can be uphill. You start a diet on a Monday. You get Monday-itis on Monday. Lots of songs have been written about Mondays. And on Mondays, more people play on holidays. At Australia Post, we organise passports, traveller's checks and foreign currency. You can do your personal banking and pay bills before you go. So you'll enjoy more of every day. Australia Post, part of every day. Have you got your TATS ticket to dream in this Tuesday's Super 7's Oslotto jackpot? There's a fantastic $13 million to be won. 13 million Super 7's Oslotto dollars this Tuesday. Grab your ticket at your Tattersall's outlet now. Australia, you have a choice. At Jetstar, we're committed to being Australia's low fares airline. On your Jetstar! So if you find a lower internet fare than our Jetsaver fare... Hey Dad, check this out! ...to the same Jetstar destination at a comparable time... Kelly Weekend! ...we'll double the difference. Double? Double! Call us, buy our fare, and we'll send you a Jetstar voucher for double the difference. That's our guarantee. What are you waiting for? For more details, visit jetstar.com. Conditions apply. Become part of the dance experience. Visit 10.com.au slash dance for your chance to win a Holden Astra CDX three-door coupe valued at over $31,000. This is your chance to take centre stage. Entries close soon. Don't miss out. Without a working smoke alarm, this may be the only way your family can be identified. Not all batteries are the same. Change your smoke alarm battery to a long-lasting alkaline battery on April 6th. <laughs> New from Dimatap, Dimatap Pain and Fever. Up to eight hours of fever relief. Up to two hours longer than children's paracetamol. So kids can play for a really long time. What a relief there's Dimetown. Well, it's totally inexcusable. But this sort of thing is just not on. It's all too distressing. The answer is to get them closed down immediately.
It's the furniture those rich people don't want you to have. Because at Adriatic, we give you sophisticated pieces at unpretentious prices right across our range of lounge, dining and bedroom furniture. Just like our Kim Extension dining setting at just $1,690. Adriatic Furniture. Exclusive yes, expensive no. I think I need my Valium. This guy's hiding a secret that's literally killing him. I can't move my heart! I can't move my heart! Can they uncover the secret in time and save his life? House, 8.30 Wednesday. With a population of 7,000 people, stall lies at the foot of the Grampians and the Great Western Wine Region. Gold was discovered nearby here in 1853 and it actually continues to be found in Victoria's largest operating mine. The city offering uh, cultural and heritage walking and driving tours, art galleries, museums, wineries and golf. There's everything there for you. Having recovered from a series of devastating bushfires, the regeneration in the Halls Gap area is proving popular with tourists as the area rebounds. And it rebounds spectacularly on this day every year. The Australia Post store gift of 2008 is just around the corner. And the runners will be introduced to the crowd at the moment. Nervous moments for everyone here and the build-up. Chris is something to behold. If you've never ever come to store before, you have to come here one day because these 10 minutes are really something. This is what it's all about, Peter. This is where the nerves started to jingle and uh, you can feel it in the, in the crowd, can't you? The, everyone is on waiting expectation and about what, they, what they've got to be able to do. And these athletes, you can see their legs shaking. We're looking at Ben Vickery there, concentrating on what's going to happen. The former boxer looking to strike a knockout blow of his own here. He turned to running after he had a knee reconstruction. And he's got a great deal of self-belief that he can do well here. He ran 12-24 in his semi-final. 24 years of age from Whittlesey, the man in pink. And he's got the black socks on again, which he did in the, in the heats. But he looks pretty calm, Peter. And no doubt the Iron Maiden singlet underneath that pink jacket as well. Bradley Peters of Queensland, coached by Tony Fairweather, the coach of Josh Ross, a dual winner here. Well, they're going to have a great battle out in front, off eight and a quarter and off nine. Brad Peters, the oldest man in the field, 31. Richard Hankin, definitely one of the favourites, 26 years of age. The sales manager ran 12.09 in his semi-final. Makes his way down the hill to the start. The favourite, unquestionably, listen to the reception. His fourth appearance at stall. His sister ran second in the women's gift not long ago. The South Australian Keith Sheehy, also trained by Tony Fairweather, former Bay Sheffield winner way back in 2001. And they love a red runner here, the national 100 metres champion. Otis Gower heads to the start 120 metres away. And the fact that he has been in national championships will help him here, help him in the pressure of this situation. Chris Perry, cast your mind back 26 years ago, if you can, and what your thoughts were just at this stage with the gift just minutes away. I do remember it, Peter, but thanks for the, uh, the, the age lesson there. But um, the issue, I think, is the fact that you've got to be remain composed. When I ran, it was all a bit of a blur. It all just happened so quickly. Now that they sort of, there's Otis taking his time, just wandering back, it all happened so quickly. But it's, the importance is they have a little blue, uh, break, a block start, just to settle the nerves. And this is going to be where it's won or lost, right here. So the fact that Gower has been at national championship level is surely going to help him against the likes of Sam Jamison, who at 21 years of age is the youngest man in the field. Pressure is only something you place on yourselves, as top athletes tell us all the time. But surely Sam Jamison must be feeling a little pressure at the moment. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. And the secret for Jamison, he's got to give Richard Hankin in the yellow a one metre start. So the, the race is going to be, the two favourites are sitting in the middle. And as if Jamison can just maintain his composure, he's got to give him a metre start. And remember that it's a 120 metre race and not to try and beat him in the first 30. A lot of store gifts are lost. 
because athletes try and win it in the first 30, not over 120. So there you go, three metres and 3.25 for the men in red and white, Gower and Sheehy. And then six metres, Jamison, he's, he's almost in no man's land a little bit, but he's got Hank and a metre in front of him, which is going to be a good lure for him. Peter's 8.25, Vickery will lead them for a long way, you would think. You would think that, and it's interesting that the, you've got the two back markers, the two middle markers in Jamison and Hankin, and the two out markers in Peters and Vickery. Three races in one race, Peter. It's going to be a fascinating few minutes. Time for everyone to take a deep breath. $40,000 to the winner here. The time-honoured event starter, Maury Campbell, is the man in charge as he goes to each of the runners and wishes them luck. All the best. There's no pressure on Otis because he knows he's slightly out of it on time and he can just go and express himself over the next, over the 120 and just no pressure. 24 years of age from Queensland, Otis Gower, the reigning national 100 metres champion. His coach, Daryl Walson, finished third in the gift in 2001. Keith Sheehy beside him. 24 years of age also. Up in the line. Thanks, White. Just called up to the start by Maury Campbell. Runners, you'll be told to walk to your blocks. Do not get on till I give you the command. And when I call you to the set, I'm going to hold it till everyone is firmly settled. Now, I'm going to be severe on any movement in the set position. If you're unsteady, put up your hand. All the best to you all. This is where the nerves are now. And the reason for that is... There's nowhere to hide now. They are alone. No training partners, no training advice. It's just get out there, get on, get on your blocks, and run for glory. Quiet. Falls over Central Park. The 2008 Australia Post store gift final. The favourite, Sam Jamison, in blue. Sam! Away, Jamison, a very good start. Gower got a good start to the green going well. Peter's up past Vickery. Here comes Jamison through the middle. Gower running on well. Jamison's got control of it, though. It's a favourites gift. Jamison wins. Hank in second. Gower third. 12-13 the time. Sam Jamison, the youngest man in the field, the favourite, takes the gift in 2008. And he goes to his warm-up partner, Shane McKenzie, and is swamped by his... Training other training partners. Nick Fiedler has done a wonderful job. We'll see Nick come in a little bit slower probably, but what a great run. He ran composed at the 60 metre mark. He ran away from them. And what a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant win. If his coach could have shown him a videotape of what he wanted him to do, he could show him that race there. Absolutely. Technically, composure wise, technique wise, and that's what you have to do. At the big events, you put it on the line, and Sam Jamison did that. He won like a favourite should win. His sister Sally down there, second in the women's gift earlier. But the 21-year-old from Williamstown, Sam Jamison, making his fourth appearance. He's made the semi-finals every time he's come here, and now his name is in history. For this reason, he had the race in command a long way out. Look at the, in the blue. He's come up alongside Richard Hankin, who is his real threat and now just accelerates past him and the race is over. Gower runs a great race to get into third spot, but Sam Jamison made it his own at the halfway line and he's won it clearly. He's won it probably by about two metres and a great, great victory. And here he is, his greatest moment. Sam Jamison is the stall gift champion with Ian Cohen. At the age of 21, they're describing it upstairs as your greatest moment. You describe it for us. Well, it was absolutely that, that's for sure. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of over the moon at the moment. Um, it's all a little surreal. And it's probably going to take me quite a bit of time to take it all in. Um, but yeah, it ran well in the semi. Um, felt good coming into the final. You know, I just had to hit the gun, done it in training. Just do it on the day. What about the emotions, the blood, sweat and tears, all the early morning trainings, the late session trainings when you don't feel like it? What about the emotion of that, that you've finally won here on Easter Monday? 
Oh, that's right, there's plenty of times when you uh, don't want to go to the track. It's uh, 39 degrees and probably just want to stay home, but you get out of bed and you go down the track anyway because you hope one day you can achieve something like this. And it's just justification for all that hard work. It's fantastic. I asked you after the semis if everything was going to plan. You were pretty tight-lipped about it then. You can release a little bit of it now. Take us through the plan that got you the Australia Postal gift. Well, I've just been with my new coach, Nick Fiedler, just for this season. And right from the get-go, this is what we want to achieve. And he is so meticulous in all that he does with his running, in all his runners. And he set it out right from the get-go and it pretty much just played out exactly how he wanted it. It's going to be forever known as Jemison's Run. Where's Sally? Come on in, Sally. There could have been a brother and sister act here. Sally did so well, of course, in the uh, final, in the women's gift final as well. Sally, what does it mean for you to see the brother get across the line here? Uh, <laughs> I was running the race with him. I... He's just the most wonderful person. He's my best friend. Um, I love him to death. Um, my whole family's into athletics. We talk athletics all the time, and sometimes it gets Sally more than work. most. Yeah, probably me more than most. But um, I'm just absolutely ecstatic for him. I've known he's wanting this really bad, and I'm just really pleased that he's um, been able to achieve it. It's, also, it's awesome. Well, congratulations, Sam. You are the 2008 Australia Post Stall Gift winner. Thank you. Can I quickly say, um, just a big thank you to my grandma and grandpa. I know they're watching at home. Love you lots. Yes. All my extended family, there's a lot of them. I'm sure they're watching. All the Willie crew, all my mates at home. Thanks for watching, and a big party when I get back. Thank you. <laughs> it's a big day for Sam and Sally and all the Jamison family. Sam Jamison, the champion in 2008 in 12-13, convincingly. Richard Hankin ran very well for second. Benjamin Vickery, third. Otis Gower, the mark, proved a bit too much. Bradley Peters, fifth. And Keith Sheehy is sixth, but he made the final of the Australia Post Stall gift. The presentation coming up at Stall on the other side of this break. Well, guys, we're back on Sunday, so have you got any ideas? Yeah. No. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes we do. Cats. It's like a cat. With, um, with some beanie, beanies. Cats with beanies. Cats with... We don't have the cat, but we have the beanie. So that's yeah. just sort of like a work in progress yeah. at the moment. Hamish and Andy join Rove with Kerry, Pete, Husey and Ryan. The new season of Rove, Sunday on 10. Monday. Mondays are hard work. Mondays can be uphill. You start a diet on a Monday. You get Monday-itis on Monday. Lots of songs have been written about Mondays. And on Mondays, more people play the holidays. At Australia Post, we organise passports, travellers' checks and foreign currency. You can do your personal banking and pay bills before you go. So you'll enjoy more of every day. Australia Post, part of every day. Whether you've been working hard or partying hard, you're gonna need a big deal. Red Rooster's Big Deal. A rooster roll, potato and gravy, two crispy chicken strips, chips and a large Coke, just $9.90. It's gonna be big, it's gotta be red. Getting a home loan shouldn't mean losing your bank manager. With Bank of Queensland, you get a personal bank manager for the life of your loan and a discounted rate. For a great rate and one-to-one -one service, talk to Bank of Queensland. For centuries, the people of Morocco have been enjoying the benefits of argan oil. One of the richest sources of vitamin E, argan oil helps to reduce the signs of ageing. Now finally available in Australia. Visit arganoil.com.au What you doing? Making breakfast. A healthy breakfast. No artificial colours, no preservatives and definitely no added sugar. Looks good. Just the natural goodness of whole grains. You wouldn't even know about whole grains, though, would you, Dad? Me? Nah. Vitabrits has 99% whole grain wheat with no added sugar. I guess I'm just not young enough to know it all. Vitabrits. Simple, natural goodness. I love plantation shutters, and now I adore my Victory motorised plantations. Call Victory today for a free measuring quote. Victory, Victory, cut the blinds. 
beautiful night. I've got a date. What? I just never thought of you as having trouble meeting men. I'm only looking for one guy, and I haven't met him yet. Look, it's not the only way of meeting people, but it's increasing my chances of finding the one. And besides, love of life is so convenient. So it's like an extra tool in the toolkit. Exactly. Away, Jamison, a very good start. Gower got a good start to the green going well. Peters up past Vickery. Here comes Jamison through the middle. Gower running on well. Jamison's got control of it though. It's a favourite skip. Jamison wins. Hankin second, Gower third. 12-13 the time. Sam Jamison, the youngest man in the field, the favourite, takes the gift in 2008. He certainly had it all the way this weekend and it wasn't just the final, it was the heats and the semi-final as well. Sam Jamison, our winner this afternoon. Dennis Attackador from Australia Post is with us and he's got the all-important check, Dennis. Thank you. On behalf of Australia Post, I'd like to present a check for $40,000 to the winner of the Australia Post store gift. Congratulations, Sam Jamison. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Sam Jamison, your winner. Sam, just before you get there, tell us about tonight. You've got a bit of money to spend now. I don't think I can actually cash this just yet. Um, but I don't know, we'll go across the road and I just relax and, and come down from it all and just enjoy a beer with all my running group, um, all my mates outside the running group, um, just everyone in the veil. It'll be fantastic. You've had a minute or two to think about it now. Has it sunk in? You are the Australia Post stall gift champion. Uh, give us a week. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that one. But uh, no, I'll, I'll definitely have to sleep on it, that's for sure. Sam, congratulations. Dennis, thank you very much. And thank you on behalf of everyone here to Australia Post for presenting the Australia Post stall gift. Peter, back to you. Thank you very much to Ian Cohen and uh, well done to Dennis Attackador and all at Australia Post for their support and a great moment in the life of Sam Jamison. I, I asked you before the race what it felt like for you back when you won it. How long did it take for it to sink in? How long is it going to take for young Sam, do you think? Look, I think I concur with what he said. It took about a week before it all started to sink in. You know, you had to go about your normal way of doing things and then eventually you realise that you're a store gift winner. You've got to admire his composure. At 21 years of age, we spoke about the pressure that he might have been under before the race, but he didn't show it at all. He executed the race plan just perfectly. Absolute composure, absolute talent, and as we said, between 60 and 70, he accelerated away from the field, and he won it like a stall gift winner should win it. Great achievement too from Richard Hankin. He also ran very well in second placing. In fact, all of the men, just to make it through to the stall gift final is an achievement in itself. And they should be all be proud of themselves. Obviously, there can only be one winner. That's a cliche. But uh, to be able to make, his, make a store gift final is a great achievement. And just in closing, there has been a lot of controversy leading up here, but wasn't it great that we were able to get here and to appreciate what people have been appreciating since way back in 1878? It's got an atmosphere all of its own. Just that the way that the crowd hushed before the start and then as the, the expectation is just unbelievable. And as Peter said, if you've never been to Stall, you should get up here next year. Well, I'm looking forward to being here next year already, and uh, no doubt you'll be sitting beside me in the commentary box. Great to work with you again, Chris. OK, thanks, Peter. It's great to work with you too. Chris Perry, the 1982 winner, joining us. Our thanks to Ian Cohen. Thank you for joining us around Australia. Congratulations to Sam Jamison, the champion in 2008 in the Australia Post Stall Gift. We'll see you at Central Park in 12 months' time.
2008 Australia Post Storewell Gift is proudly brought to you by Skins. You want to be like us. In 10 news, two foreign students remain missing after being washed from rocks on Phillip Island. A search is also underway for a Canadian bushwalker missing in the Yarra Ranges National Park. Richmond skipper Kane Johnson fined and suspended over a drunken indiscretion. And after missing a white Christmas, Britain is now enjoying a white Easter. Melbourne showers tomorrow with a top of 23.